And welcome back to WCCF Tech TV, everyone. This is Keith once again, and I do apologize for you not seeing my face here, but at least it's not gameplay footage. It's just a little extra footage that we had from the Consumer Electronics Show 2018 that we used throughout, but what have you. Let's get on into the real news here. The real news is the fact that high-end graphics cards has reached insane pricing levels. We're talking NVIDIA's GTX 1080 Ti going for $1,600 and AMD's Vega 64 at over two grand. So 2017 saw GPU pricing become a pain in the neck with AMD's Vega graphics cards, and it looks like 2018 is set to make last year's pricing look positively cute. AMD's Radeon RX Vega 64, which has an MSRP of $499, was easily available at the $599 to $799 mark within the months following its release. It's now, however, floating at roughly $2,100, whereas NVIDIA's GeForce GTX 1080 Ti specifically the EVGA for the Win 3, is going for as much as $1,600, which is significantly over the price of the $799 to $899 that we have seen it sold for it in the past. Interestingly, the reason behind the price gouging of both products is different. Vega 64 is simply a beast at XMR mining, and if you remember previously, we discussed that in an article, and it can actually outperform the Volta-powered Titan at 2100 hash per second. This means that the price of $800, you'll be able to make the car pay for itself when electricity it consumes in just over four months. And that's an insanely good deal for miners all over the world, but eh, not so much for everybody else. Now, NVIDIA high-end graphics cards, on the other hand, are up right now because of lack of competition. I mean, after all, Vega 64 is completely MIA and rarely available, and this in turns is causing the GeForce GPUs to spike in price as well. Even if Vega 64 is available, the card can, at best, trade blows with the 1080 Ti, which makes the 1080 Ti the go-to card for a balls-to-the-wall gaming build. This is why desirable custom variants like the EVGA for the Win 3 are selling for upwards of $1,600. Now, it is fair to be said that the NVIDIA cards do mine fairly well. That's something that we didn't really point out in the article that I, I slightly disagree with, is the fact that NVIDIA cards are extremely efficient at mining, especially if you're using something like NiceHash Miner, despite the problems that it's had in the past, still proves quite the positive yields when using NVIDIA cards. Now, another reason for the spike is that memory saw a spike recently, which was expected to trickle down to consumers eventually. But this is something that has more to do with the mining boom than anything else, and the cascade effect that it has in the rest of the ecosystem. Here's the problem, though. Even if AIBs or IHVs introduce more supply into controlled prices, this isn't something that can come down easily until mining itself becomes unprofitable. It's even possible that the days where cards sold for MSRP are over and market equilibrium will decide its selling price from now on. The fact that Radeon will not be introducing any higher end cards in 2018 really doesn't help with the entire situation, putting even more pressure on the current lineup of GPUs. We should see temporary alleviation in prices at regular intervals as manufacturers increase supply. And if you're in the market to buy a GPU, well, snack them up as fast as you can because they likely won't stick around for long. Hopefully, at least for those budget buyers, the upcoming Ryzen 5 2400G and the Ryzen 3 2200G may bring some relief for the entry-level gamer. So this has been Keith with WCCF Tech TV. Let us know what you think about this topic. We'd love to hear your feedback as we are interested to hear what gamers and miners all have to say about this. So we'll catch you in the next video.